Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'm gonna show you these 18650 battery shields. Now, what I've done is gone and purchased all three of the available sizes that you can actually get. Now, the key difference between them is that the first unit holds one battery, second holds two, and the last one holds four of those 18650 cells. Now, let's go through the specs of these units. Now, just to point out, I did purchase all three of these from eBay. You can get them uh, online in a heap of different stores, but I just purchased them from there. If we're looking at the single cell shield, it's about $3 US. Uh, for the two cells, it's about $7 US. And for the four cells, it's about $10 US plus shipping, depending on where you're getting it from. Um, that's their rough prices. All right, so specs of the units. Now, they all have the same specs, uh, except for the fact that they obviously have different amounts of battery cells that can go in them. So you basically have the built-in battery protection for the overcharge and uh, over discharge. Now, to charge the actual units themselves, you have the micro USB port input, and then the output is a type A USB. I'll show you that in a minute. Now, the current for charging is 0.5 amps. There is a switch to turn the unit on and off, which means that you can't just plug something in and it'll automatically uh, turn on the battery unit. There actually needs to be that physical switch. You need to click it on, um, which I'll show you later on. The input voltage ranges between that five and eight volts. And then we have the outputs. So we have a three volt at one amp output, 5 volt 2 amp output, which I'll show you the difference and where you can locate those voltage points. LED indicators. Um, and yeah, so you can see the rest of the other details there and the sizing and such. Now, it does say you need to be careful about the way you put in the batteries. If you put them in incorrectly, you're going to fry the unit. So you just have to be careful when you're putting it in. Um, you can read through a lot of the other stuff there. Not much difference between the units, and you can actually see when we jump to the batteries themselves, uh, the physically, the differences don't change much with the components. So, all right, so coming back to the actual units themselves, as you can see, there's those USB ports at the top, and that's where you would actually be drawing or using the actual uh, current from. You've got those switches on the side to turn them on and off. Uh, which I'll show you further on how we do that. Um, but they're all the same. They all basically are designed the same way and wired up the same way. Uh, and if I flip them over, you'll see the components on the back, which are actually all the same, except the boards are spaced out more as uh, you get further into the more and more cells. Um, you can see the LEDs that are actually lined up, which tell you the uh, capacity of the batteries. Now, the charging ports are located at the bottom. You've got the USB-C and the micro USB as well. Uh, they're located on the sides for the two of those and then at the bottom for the four uh, cell unit. So that, that's where you would charge those batteries and um, you would export or you'd actually take power from the top via that USB-A connection. Now, like I was saying earlier, make sure you put your cells in properly. You've got the positive and the negative, so you have to line those up properly. We don't want to fry these boards. I've got these cells already, um, which you would need to purchase cells for these. They don't come with it, so make sure you get those 18650 cells. I've got them all tested and charged already myself, so I'm just going to plug them in. You probably want to make sure that you can charge them uh, before putting them in if possible. When the cells are connected, especially in the two and the four unit uh, modules, they actually work in parallel with the batteries. So you don't want to put in a cell that's fully discharged and another cell that is fully charged. So it is recommended you would to tr try and charge those batteries up before you even put them in. Now, if you don't have another way of charging one, one cell at a time, you can actually just plug one cell into the uh, unit, say if it's a four module unit, you can just plug one cell in and charge that at a time. It doesn't need to have all four of the cells uh, connected up. So you can do that, make sure your batteries are charged up and also make sure that those cells are actually working, hence why I test my batteries 
in another testing unit prior to actually using in these type of projects. All right, so first off, we're gonna look at charging these units. So we have a micro USB here, which you can plug into the port. I've got it plugged on the other end into the power supply. And as you can see, the lights will start to show up to say, okay, here's where the capacity of this cell is. And in this case, it's fully charged. So if you were to plug it into the other units, you'd get the same results. If there was more than one battery, it's actually looking at the voltage level. So that's why if they're pretty similar, you're going to see what the correct capacity is. And you can see here that it's now charging just to top off a little bit of that battery. Now there's those five LEDs. So if you assume it's about 20% um, for each light, that battery is in between the 80 and 90%. So it's probably just topping it off. On the force module cell, same thing here. As I was mentioning earlier in the specs, the charging ports, they can be either one of the USBs, uh, but it only charges at 0.5 amps. So it does take a lot of time if you're charging those four cells from an empty charge or a discharged battery. So you probably want to uh, make sure that you've got the time to actually charge them up properly. All right, so now we're gonna look at charging my phone. I'm using a iPhone cable. We're gonna plug the USB-A connector into one of these modules. Once we plug it in, we'll find that it shouldn't do anything to begin with because it's not turned on. So we don't get anything on the phone. There's the button on the side and you can see that the LEDs aren't lit up. So when we push the button, the LEDs will light up and the phone will start to charge. So that's how we actually turn it on and we're starting to now charge the phone or whatever else you wanna plug into the actual unit. It doesn't have to charge phones. It could be uh, anything that runs off a USB cable. So now it'll slowly drain the battery and you'll see the lights change as uh, you use up the battery. Now, once you're done, all you have to do is push the button twice, which then turns the unit off. And you can see the LEDs turn off. Same on this unit, click it twice, wait a second, and then it'll turn off. Now, even if something's plugged into it, you can double click it and it'll change, as you'll see. It'll turn the unit off and stop charging and the phone will say, hey, I'm not charging anymore. So. That's basically how we turn the unit off. Now, as I was mentioning earlier, while the unit's actually charging here, I'll turn it on so you can see the phone's charging, but what I'm gonna do is start disconnecting cells out of the actual unit. So you can see it's charging there. As I start pulling cells out, it doesn't actually change what's happening. It's, it's still charging off the remaining cells. It still shows, yep, I'm 100% full. And this goes all the way down to basically the one cell. So you don't have to run multiple cells in this unit. So you could have it as backup. So you can see it's still charging. So as it focuses, there's no need to actually have all four cells in there. It just has the capability to have all four of those cells. So once you actually remove the last battery, it'll shut off. I wouldn't recommend connecting and disconnecting cells while you're actually trying to charge stuff. I'm just doing it here to show you guys what actually happens, um, which does help if you don't have enough cells or if you want to charge cells independently one at a time, or uh, maybe two at a time, whatever you need. All right, so what I'm trying now is to show you those extra ports where you can actually connect your five and three volts off instead of just using the USB port. As you can see here, we've got the plus and minuses on each side. We have a five volt rail on one side and a three volt rail on the other side. Now, once I actually line this up across those positive and negative ports while I'm holding the camera at the same time, you can see we've got five volts there, um, which you can actually solder on some wires if you wanted to connect wires up to it um, and run off to something else, say for your project, whatever you're doing. And on the other side of the actual unit, we have the three volt rail, which when I actually get a stable hand on it, you can see that we get three volts or a little bit over three volts 
on that uh, reading there. So same thing, you can run three volts off to another component on your project. Very handy if you're doing things with like Arduinos, um, things like that, or Raspberry Pis, because they use that five and three volts as a standard uh, voltage. Now, as it says in the specs and also written on the board there, five volt, three amp output, and the three volt is a one amp output. So we're talking total across the board. So you could split that across uh, all of those connectors if you need to. Just make sure you don't go over that amount because it's obviously not designed to be outputting that much current uh, across all of those. So the last connection point I wanna show you is the soldering tabs that you can see. So if you wanted to, you could actually uh, spot weld or do some type of soldering direct to the connectors of the batteries uh, if you need to. It would be running direct off the battery though, not uh, through the actual charge and discharge unit. So not sure what you would do with that, but the option is available uh, for whatever reason. Could be for monitoring if you wanted. The last thing I want to go through is show you what happens when the cells are fully discharged. I try to turn it on, it flashes a few times and then it turns off. So it's obviously fully discharged. When we plug it in to charge those cells up again, uh, we get the lights that then flicker um, and then it'll start to charge. Now the four cells in there is gonna take forever. So I'm gonna have to leave that one to charge for quite some time. Now I actually quite enjoy using these modules. Last thing I wanna point out though, the wiring and all the circuit boards are exposed, so just be careful not to short circuit or do anything like that. If this is something that you're gonna be carrying around in your pocket or in a bag or something, it's probably not suitable because you'll probably short circuit it on something, so make sure you buy one that's probably in a case. But other than that, that's about it from me. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Keep up to date with all the other projects. Let me know what you think about this one. But thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.